I'm Dantavius, how you doing? I got my Peanuts Halloween shirt on, so you know I ain't screwing around today. Now, a few weeks back, I put out a Cryptids Iceberg, and to be honest, I've been putting off the second part for a little while because the first one took way too freaking long to make, and I can't put it off anymore. The people are restless, and they want a part two. So here it is. For this half of the iceberg, I'm honestly gonna be skipping a few entries, so uh, don't eat me out. Eat me out, wait, that's, don't, don't chew me out. The thing about these cryptids are that the lower you go down the list, the more and more like, not even obscure they become. It's just like one guy can make some shit up and say like, oh no man, this is a local legend in West Virginia and people will believe it because I, they're, I don't know, I don't know. But yeah, typically if I can't find any information on a cryptid that's not on the cryptid wiki or from a creepy pasta, I'm probably gonna skip it. Or if I just feel like it, I'm gonna skip it. Cause hey, it's my video. I can do whatever the fuck I want. Now for part two, I've enlisted the help of some of my friends. Well, I, I don't know if they're friends, but I emailed them to help me and they emailed me back. So I guess that's as close as you can get to a friend on YouTube. So yeah, shout out to Fox Akimbo and Book of Valis. Go check out their channels. They make really great content. And shout out to Reddit user Jimmo Seth for creating this iceberg chart. There's a link to it in my description if you want to follow along with me. Also, uh, if it wasn't obvious, go watch part one if you haven't already. And let's not waste any more time with this intro. Let's jump right into the second part of the cryptids iceberg. Andy and Wolf. In 1926, a man by the name of Lawrence Hagenbach bought an unknown animal skin in Buenos Aires. Unable to identify the animal, he sent it to Germany, where it was examined by Dr. Ingo Krumbeagle? Man, these Germans have some crazy ass names. Anyways, Krum and Beagle claimed it was an undiscovered species of maned wolf. Hagenbach claimed there was three other pelts just like it, implying that it wasn't just a one-off creature. Ukumar. Ukumar is an Argentinian Sasquatch. It's described as being five to seven feet tall and covered in thick hair with small eyes, huge arms and legs. Dang, man, it kinda, kinda describes me a little bit. It also makes a sound that sounds like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Now, I don't speak Spanish, so who knows what that means. It's been speculated that the unknown creature could possibly be a spectacled bear, which is endangered and is known to live in the area. There's only about 3,000 of them remaining in the wild. <laughs> Snallygaster. The Snallygaster is a dragon-like beast said to inhabit Maryland. Tales of the Snallygaster originated with German immigrants in the 1700s. Now, sightings of the creature were pretty common in the 18th century, but they went away for a while, about 200 years, until the early 20th century. Man, I guess Snally really was napping for a while. Anyways, in 2909, wait, what? Damn, dude, I think, uh... I think I made a little typo. 1909, Maryland residents reported seeing a beast with enormous wings, a long pointed bill, claws like steel hooks, and an eye in the center of its forehead. It was also described as screeching like a locomotive. Kind of sounds like my ex-wife. Anyways, reports of this thing were making people go crazy. The Smithsonian even offered a reward for it, and Theodore Roosevelt even considered personally hunting the thing down. That is until he realized he's the fucking president of the United States and didn't have time to hunt down a mythical creature. And of course, it was later revealed that the sightings were a hoax to increase readership for the Middletown Valley Register. Aw oh, man, you tell me there's no one-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people eater? Dang. Now, despite the hoax, some people swear it's still real and that the hoax was based on previous sightings. Miami Beach Scorpion is a large sea scorpion looking thing allegedly found in Miami. Cockatrice, you might be familiar with these things if you played The Witcher 3. It looks kind of like a cross between a rooster and a lizard. It was described as having the head of a rooster with the body of a dragon. Also, it supposedly had the power of killing you just by looking at you. Kind of like my... no. No, I shouldn't say, my ex-wife. But take this with a grain of salt because I found all this information on a rooster breeding website. Not sure how reputable that is. Like the article I read about cockatrices also said there's a way to train them. So, I don't know. Dire wolves were giant wolves which lived about 10,000 plus years ago during the time of saber-toothed cats and mammoths. Now, giant wolves have been spotted from time to time. Check out this video. So 
So here's the thing, scientists know that dire wolves were only slightly larger than modern gray wolves, so I'm pretty sure people who claim to have seen dire wolves just saw like an extra big wolf. Like, look how big these mother suckers can get. For perspective, that girl is 7 foot 2. Moon eyed people were a mysterious race of people said to inhabit Appalachia before they were systematically eliminated by the Native Americans. But don't worry, they later gave them casinos and reservations, so it's all good. English author Benjamin Barton wrote about them in his 1790 97 book where he stated they were called moon-eyed because they could not see well during the day. They were also described as being tall, fair-skinned, with light hair and green eyes. They also carried strange weapons and tools. Man, that's crazy. That's like an exact description of Benedict Cumberbatch, if you think about it. Hudson River Monster. Oh man, we got another river monster. It's like the 50th fucking one on this chart, man. Anyways, I'm not gonna get too mad about it because it's only the first one on, on this particular video. The Hudson River Monster is a Loch Ness monster looking thing that lives in the Hudson River. I don't wanna talk about these things anymore, man. I don't wanna talk about river monsters, lake monsters, or even sea monsters. If you wanna see talk about that, watch part one. I know I keep bringing that up, but just watch part one, there's like 50,000 river monsters in it. Hippogriff, I don't know why this one is so far down the list. You're telling me you haven't seen Harry Potter? Buckbeak, bro? Come on. Tales of hippogriffs go back to the Middle Ages. A Spanish historian named Vidal claimed that they lived in France. Claw marks were found on a rock that were attributed to a hippogriff. Over the years, there have been many hoaxes involving hippogriffs, the most famous of which was in 1904 in Lake George, New York. Basically, a man created a fake hippogriff to scare his friends, but it ended up becoming a big media story at the time. Haimushi is a moth-like creature with a segmented body and four wings. They're very small, like almost microscopic and they typically live in people's lungs. Hayamushi cause various health issues and if they leave a person's lungs and can't find their way back, they turn into a fireball and burn up and then the host dies as well. Zexu or Zizu, I don't know how to pronounce that, is a South American version of the Thunderbird. But you know, I'm thinking if Thunderbirds are real, it's probably the same exact thing because they could just fly down south for the winter like a Canadian goose. Yuki Ona is a Japanese spirit that takes the form of a beautiful woman. Man, she's waifu material if you ask me. She's typically associated with ice and is said to have very pale skin that blends into the snow. Her personality depends on the region and the time period. Early on, the Yuki Onas were described as evil and would kill travelers by trapping them in snowstorms. She was also depicted as being succubus-like, luring simps into snowstorms with her good looks and sucking them dry of their life force. And that's like the original Twitch thought. Anyways, these days, Yuki Ona is not looked at as an evil spirit, but a kinder, ghostly, guide-like figure. The Blackbird of Chernobyl. Now, if you've been on the internet for the past 10 years, you should know exactly what the Chernobyl disaster is. As a matter of fact, if you haven't been on the internet in 10 years, you should know what it is. If you somehow don't know, it was an event in 1986 in which a nuclear reactor melted down in Ukraine and spewed out more radiation than your grandma's microwave. A few days before the incident, multiple men in a nuclear power plant's control room claimed to have seen a strange bird-like creature. It was also apparently seen just before the reactor meltdown. According to rumors, at least five employees had seen a dark, headless creature with gigantic wings and red eyes. I say have no head, but it has eyes. Eyes go in your head, whatever. Anyways, the description kind of fits another cryptid we talked about. That's right, Mothman, baby. Hey man, Mothman has traveled more than I have. Cave children, before you ask, no, this is not referring to those kids who got trapped in a cave in Thailand in 2018. Now, all the information I could find on these cave children comes from a creepypasta, and I try to stay away from carbs, so let's skip this horse shit. Old Ned, also known as the Lake Utopia Monster. Fuck, man, another lake monster. At least this one looks different than the Loch Ness Monster. Old Ned has been described as being 20 feet long with a long head and being reddish brown in color. Sightings of the large creature in the lake go back to the late 1800s and the last reported sightings of Old Ned was back in 2000. There's a lot of theories as to what this creature could be. If you ask me, it's probably a manatee. Now why do I think this? Because usually when there's a lake monster, an ocean monster, or a river monster, it's, it always turns out to be like a manatee or something. Big muddy monster. <laughs> Sounds like a nickname for my ass. In Murfreesboro, Illinois, two police reports were filed, one on June 25th and one on June 26th of 1973, detailing the sightings of a creature described as being loud, tall, 
a white haired and caked in mud. After the first two initial reports, more came in throughout the years. Officers who were investigating the creature said they didn't believe it was a prank since so many unrelated people were filing reports that had nothing to do with each other. Bunny Man refers to a Virginia urban legend of a man in a bunny suit who attacks people with an axe. The Bunny Man is said to attack his victims from the Colchester Overpass, which is now nicknamed Bunny Man Bridge. The first report of BM was in 1970 by a US Air Force cadet named Robert Ben it and his fiance. They were visiting a family friend when all of a sudden Robert's driver's side window gets smashed in by a hatchet. He looks out and sees a large man in a bunny costume screaming that he's trespassing on private property. That seems pretty strange, but you have to remember this is Virginia we're talking about, so it's not that weird if you think about it. Anyways, that was only one of the reported sightings. The second sighting was 10 days later by a security guard named Paul Phillips. He claims he saw a guy wearing a bunny costume on the porch of an unfinished house with an axe. When Paul approached, the man told him you are trespassing. If you come closer, I will chop off your head. Pretty weird, man. Pretty weird. Anyways, Rougarou is a French werewolf. Tales of this creature are popular in Louisiana and it's said to prowl the swamps around New Orleans. Lake Worth Monster. Okay. I am convinced that every lake in America has some sort of monster living in it or around it. Unlike most lake monsters, the Lake Worth monster is not a sea creature, but rather a goat man with scales and long fingernails. Newspaper reports began reporting on sightings of this monster back in the 60s. There was even a photo taken of it, and in true cryptid fashion, it's blurry as shit and looks like nothing. Hopkinsville Goblins. So you know how aliens in popular media are often depicted as little green men with big heads and green eyes? Well that look was actually popularized by the Hopkinsville Goblin. Dude that is so hard to say. Hopkinsville Goblin? Anyways, it was popularized by these goblins. Let's go back for a minute. On August 21st, 1955, a large family called the Suttons pulled up to their local police station claiming that a strange creature from an unknown craft was attacking their farm. Actually, multiple of these creatures were. Apparently, they were holding off these unknown beings with gunfire for several hours on some Red Dead Redemption shit. Now, the police were like, dang, an extraterrestrial shootout? Better call in backup. So they got together a team of four local policemen, state troopers, three deputy sheriffs, and four military police from a local army fort. But when they got there, what they saw shocked them. They saw nothing. That's right, they saw nothing aside from a bunch of bullet holes all over the place. Now, the press had an absolute field day with this story, and while the goblins weren't described as green in the headline, little green men stuck, and it became part of pop culture since then. Oklahoma octopus, oh boy, looks like we got another lake monster, boys, let's go. You know, you could make a drinking game out of this. Take a shot every time there's a lake monster and you'll die of alcohol poisoning before I even finish the layer. The Oklahoma octopus is said to inhabit multiple lakes in Oklahoma. This octopus is thought to be the reason for an unusually high number of drownings in Oklahoma lakes compared to most other areas. Now, there's no photographic evidence of this thing. It's well known that octopi only live in salt water, but one octopus was actually discovered in an Oklahoma lake. Suspicious? Probably not. Mallon heads are small creatures with large heads that are said to randomly attack people in Michigan, Ohio, and Connecticut. There are lots of different stories about how these little monsters got here. They all have to do with people who have hydrocephalus. It's a real condition. Excess fluid in the brain causes the head to grow. The stories say the melon-headed children lived at an asylum near the Felt Mansion. And there was a doctor that was there, and so he had the children, and he started conducting experiments on them. The melon heads revolted killing him, eating him, and going into the woods. The melon heads are said to live in underground tunnels and are possibly the result of failed experiments. If you ask me, they're probably just extremely inbred midgets. Either that or they're Anthony Fantano's lost children. Mogollon Monster, also known as Arizona Bigfoot, is a Sasquatch said to live in and around Mogollon Rim in Arizona. That's pretty much it, honestly. I, I live around Mogollon Rim. I ain't never seen it. So therefore it doesn't exist. The Giant of Kandahar. In 2002 in the Kandahar region of Afghanistan, a US Army squad went missing. A spec ops team was sent to find the missing soldiers. They were looking around for several days until one day they stumbled upon a cave. Pieces of broken military equipment and gear were scattered all around the opening. 
as they continued to serve the area, a giant 12 foot tall red headed humanoid came out of the cave and began to attack the soldiers. The giant impaled one of them with a spear the size of a tree and it took the rest of the troops 30 seconds of continuous gunfire to finally take down the giant. And these were no airsoft BB guns, okay? I'm talking about M4s. I'm talking 50 caliber sniper rifles. I'm talking platinum camo MP5 with the suppressor and laser sights. Upon reporting this event, the soldiers were all forced to sign non-disclosure agreements. Now, I think I actually saw something about this story on Facebook back in the day, so that immediately should tell you it's probably bullshit. Deer Man. Deer Man is a hybrid who has the head of a deer, or an elk, and a human torso. There have been quite a few sightings of Deer Man throughout the United States. The first one being in Ohio by a 14 year old kid who said the following account. I saw what looked like a deer on its hind legs, and I clearly remember seeing dog legs running but the rest of the body was straight up and it ran with incredible speed. Source? Trust me bro. There was another sighting in 1993 by an 8 year old so uh, we'll skip that one. And the most credible report was by a man named Kyle in 2012. Wait, his name was Kyle? Yeah this is probably gonna be bullshit but hey let's see what he has to say. He claims he was out taking photos when he saw a herd of deer suddenly running away from something. Kyle thought something weird was going on so he went back to his vehicle and that's when he saw him. Deer man standing right in front of his vehicle. Kyle slammed that gas pedal and get the F out of there. Okay, hello Dantavius' audience. Apparently I'm here to teach you guys about some cryptids. So let's go do this thing, right? The Bat Beast of Kent is the first cryptid I have to cover today. And this one was discovered in 1963 Kent, England. Apparently four British teens saw a UFO crash and went to kind of see what was going on there. And when they went to inspect it, a bizarre Bat Beast emerged from the remnants. It was described as five foot tall, had webbed feet, and most bizarrely, had no head. Other Kent locals claim to have also seen a UFO in the sky that night, but only the four boys claim to have gone to inspect what happened and saw the beast. This one is quite grim. This is the Californian fetus. So in 2015, a woman by the name of Gianna Peponis found what she thought was a giant bipedal fetus. Allegedly, there were some UFO sightings in the area of California in which she resided. And so some think that this fetus, this weird bipedal fetus, was somehow theirs. The creature possessed a long, thick neck ending with a spherical head which contained thin blue eyes and a deformed mouth. And to this day, we are no closer to solving the mystery of the Californian fetus. The Solway Firth Spaceman. So this is actually one that I've covered up on my channel, so I'm a little bit more knowledgeable on this one. But basically, there was this picture taken by photographer Jim Templeton in 1964, and it contained his daughter and what appears to be a spaceman behind her. Obviously, because this was made in 1964, most people didn't really know what a, uh, a spacesuit looked like. And so the question is, what happened here? Apparently, the Solway Firth spaceman's identity was the wife of the photographer. And because this was an old timey camera, the, uh, the aperture or something, it was just skewed. So her blue dress looked white. Apparently, it was the mum. That's what uh, commenters said on my video. The Park Forestal Alien is an extraterrestrial sighting that took place in 2004 in Chile. And what makes this one so interesting is the picture that was captured of this supposed alien. Apparently, witnesses had seen this creature dashing between two men on horseback, and they were able to actually capture a blurry picture of the event. I mean, that, that's basically it. No one knows what happened to the creature afterwards. Nobody knows if this is real or fake. What is that thing? What is that creature? And because the cryptid got away, we are no closer to unraveling this mystery. Jeff the Talking Mongoose. This one is actually quite interesting because this was a hoax from the 1930s and uh, it caught the eyes of British newspapers because in the Isle of Wight, people have caught word of this talking mongoose. The only thing is, if you know anything about mongooses, or maybe mongeese if you fancy, you would know that they probably don't talk. So this thing was a hoax. The hoax went on for years, mind you. Did, did it? Did it go on for Jeff? Jeff, the talking mongoose. 
The claims of the mongoose gained attention from all sorts of people, whether it be ghost hunters or anyone in the paranormal and the media as well. But this thing was fake. It was a hoax at the end of the day. The Awizots. This is apparently more mythology than cryptid. But nonetheless, this name translates to water dog. And this is because, according to legend, this is some sort of dog-like creature that resides in the water. It is part of Aztec folklore and, according to legend, would disguise its voice like the sound of a crying child or a helpless woman to lure its victims in and then when they get close enough, kill them. Apparently, it would strangle its prey, killing it soon after the victim was pulled into the water. Selma, I think I've ran into this cryptid before too. This is a lake monster in Norway and it's called Selma, which is kind of a funny name for it. I think that's the anglicized version though. I believe in native Norwegian, it is not called Selma. Uh, this thing dates back to the 1880s and every couple of years, there is apparently a new sighting of one. And to this day, there's never been any solid evidence, but some people do swear by its existence even though there is no solid concrete evidence of Selma ever actually existing. Almas is a Bigfoot ape-like cryptid located in Central Asia, and this thing was first spotted in the 1950s. Almas translates to wild man, and that's what this guy is. He is completely wild. The most recent notable sighting of Almas was in 1992 by cryptozoologists who say that the creature weighed about 500 pounds, was nocturnal, and could run up to 50 miles an hour. From Asia to South America, this is the story of the Mapinguari. This two meter tall creature was once an Amazonian shaman who discovered the key to immortality. This was thousands of years ago and because of this he angered the gods who were severely angry at his discovery and therefore punished him. They transformed him into a wandering hairy beast for the rest of his life and it's said that his odour was so strong that it could knock a man unconscious just by its own scent. Quite an interesting story, this thing just being forced to wander the earth for thousands and thousands of years. It can't die because it's immortal. And the most recent sighting of the Mapinwari was in 2014. The Corfu Island creature, otherwise known as the Grecian dolphin, is a strange mutated dolphin-like animal spotted two times in its existence off the coast of Greece by tourists. Not much is known about the Grecian dolphin, but it doesn't really matter anyway because the most clear picture of this creature was actually later determined to be a plastic freeboard fender. So this is not a mysterious creature, this is just a, a freeboard fender in the end. So the next entry takes place in old blighty England, takes place in the UK and in specific Greenwich, England. If you don't know, Greenwich is in London. This is the story of the Thames monster. So apparently it's quite similar to Nessie, um, but this unidentified creature was found swimming around the O2 arena. So maybe a lot less mythical than Nessie. <laughs> uh, and this creature is speculated to be anywhere from 30 to 170 feet long absolutely gargantuan. The video evidence of the creature was uploaded to YouTube but has since been taken down, leading some people to believe that it might have been taken down for a reason. Is there some sort of conspiracy that we're not seeing here? The man from Torred. This is another cryptid that I've covered on my own channel but a very fascinating story if I remember it correctly which I do because I did the research again. So in 1954, a man entered Japan but was seized at customs because they thought he was faking his identity. The Japanese put him in a high security room to try and get some information out of him. But what they found was shocking to say the least. Let's just say it was more than they bargained for because when they tried to ask him where he was from, he pointed to Andorra on the map but said Torred. And in no language does Torred mean Andorra. He said that his country had been around for a thousand years and that's all we know. The Japanese left him and he vanished into thin air, never to be seen again. That is the legend, that is the tale. Is it true? I'll leave that up to you. But a man saying that he's from modern Andorra, but not calling it that, saying it's Torred instead, which is not a place, and then just vanishing into thin air. It's, it is quite bizarre. 
Kushtaka are the mythical shape-shifting creatures found in the legends of Tlingit peoples of the Pacific Northwest coast of North America. Apologies for any mispronunciations there. They hunt their prey using their shape-shifting abilities and just like the Awisot, it masks its voice to sound like a woman or child and then lures its victim in before killing it. The only thing is with the Kushtaka is that whilst some stories, yes, do say that they kill and are actually quite cruel in doing so, other stories give them more of a benefit of the doubt saying that they help lost sailors. So who can really be sure are these good guys, are these bad guys? They definitely do have mixed uh, reviews, if you want to call them that. <laughs> Legend has it that the Kushtaka, if you encounter one, could be warded off through copper, urine, dogs, and in some stories, fire. It really is an enigmatic creature for sure. Dark Watchers, these seem to be very similar to the Shadow People uh, creatures that I have discussed in one of my videos before and basically these are just black silhouettes with eyes and people say that these eyes are watching them they see shadow people or in this case dark watchers and they feel a presence there they feel that it's not just a shadow it's a living being. Uh, the Dark Watchers are native to Californian folklore and they're most often seen between twilight and dawn, so at some point in the night people often run into them. They are most frequently spotted by travellers around the St. Lucia Mountains and that's all I really have to say for that one. They are quite interesting creatures, the Dark Watchers and the Shadow People. Just seeing is something there maybe, I don't know, it's, it's definitely a fascinating one for sure. This one might be my favourite. So in Hawaiian mythology, the Night Marchers are a group of deadly ghosts of deceased Hawaiian warriors. These so-called Night Marchers are considered the vanguard of a king, chief or chiefess. And on nights honouring the Hawaiian gods, they are said to come forth from their burial sites to rise out of the ocean and they are said to march in a large group to ancient Hawaiian battle sites. Ancient Hawaiian belief states that any mortal that might look or gaze upon the night marchers will be instantly killed in a very brutal way. So it is safe to say that if you ever come across the night marchers, if you're in Hawaii, look away, gaze away and get out of there. The water elephant is what it sounds like. It's supposedly a form of semi-aquatic African elephant. The water elephant is described as oddly shaped and tuskless. As well as that, this elephant lives most of its life in deep, murky water, presumably feeding on aquatic plants. They were first sighted in the Congo in 1907, but haven't actually been seen since 2005. So maybe they went extinct, perhaps they never existed in the first place, or perhaps they're just low on numbers, or people just haven't seen them since 2005. Who really knows for that one? And this is my final one today. This is the mutated Fukushima giant hornet and it's said that radiation from a power plant in Fukushima caused normal hornets to mutate to grow giant and then they flew to the USA somehow I don't know how and killed a bunch of people in Nebraska this is false this never happened uh, whether or not there is some sort of giant Fukushima hornets I don't actually know, but I know they never went to the US and killed people in Nebraska. That did not happen. While it is true that giant hornets exist in Asia and some of these are known to kill people, it is not true that they have ever mutated due to radiation. So that's it from me. Thank you very much. I want to say a massive thank you to you, Dantavius, for letting me be on the channel. And obviously it goes without saying that maybe if you like Dantavius, you will like my own channel because I also cover iceberg videos. Um... <clears throat> So if you like what you saw here, I've been Fox Akimbo. So if you like what you saw here, I've been Fox Akimbo and I have my own YouTube channel and I also do iceberg charts. So go there and subscribe for some quality content. I'm sure you'll enjoy it too. Anyways, thank you Dantavius. Uh, it's been a real pleasure. Sup y'all, Ariel here, paying a visit from the Book of Alice channel. I'll be doing this section from the iceberg. Shout out to Dantavius for making this collaboration happen and allowing me on his channel. Anyways, let's get into it.
Spiteful Mermaid of Pyramid Lake The Spiteful Mermaid of Pyramid Lake is an entity that inhabits Pyramid Lake in Reno, Nevada. The reason that it's called Pyramid Lake is because of this massive tufa in the middle of the lake that resembles a pyramid. According to a tribe around the area, there's a legend of a man who fell in love with a mermaid living in the lake. The tribe opposed the idea of him being with a mermaid, forcing her to stay in the water. This infuriated the entity, causing her to curse the lake. Ever since then, tragic drownings and other mysterious events have occurred in the area. Goody Cole The year is 1680 in Hampton, New Hampshire. Goody Cole is in prison, convicted of practicing witchcraft, dying alone. She is eventually buried, but she doesn't remain in the ground for long, as her body is taken out of the grave and exercised by the people in the town, who eventually ram the stake through her heart, causing for her spirit to be released tormenting those who live in the town. Ghost Boy of Clinton Road Clinton Road is a 10 mile stretch of road in New Jersey. The area is pretty desolate and is mainly surrounded by forest, with only one house appearing in the entrance of the road, nicknamed the Ghost House. Though this isn't the only creepy thing about it, as there's a bridge where a supposed ghost inhabits, pushing people into the water below. Legend says that he does this because he was run over and believes that he saves people by pushing them away from the road. La Mala Hora La Mala Hora translates to the evil hour in English. The entity is said to be an evil spirit or demon that originates from Mexico and or New Mexico, depending on the source. She is said to wander in empty roads at night, terrorizing individuals who travel alone, shapeshifting into various forms, lurking in the darkness of crossroads, waiting for her next victim. Some say that she is more feared than Satan. Cropsy Cropsy is an escaped mental patient who lived in the Willowbrook Mental Institution. He is known for kidnapping children and killing them with his favorite weapon of choice, an axe. Andre Rann is said to be his other alias. He is an American convicted kidnapper of two children and suspected serial killer, currently serving 25 years to life in prison. In the mid-1960s, Rand worked as a custodian and physical therapist at Willowbrook State School. Oregon Bandage Man this one hits close to home, as I frequent the place this cryptid or ghost inhabits, located in Cannon Beach on the Oregon coast. The bandage man appears on the desolate roads leading to the beach. People always describe the creature as a man covered in blood-stained bandages, emitting a nauseating odor. He's or it's rumored to be a logger who tragically passed due to a sawmill accident. Ghost Cities Ghost cities are described as cities that vaguely appear in the sky, often reported in China. The cities appear to be floating in the sky when they suddenly disappear. Some claim that these are simply mirages, optical illusions due to the bad air pollution. Others believe that they are gateways to other worlds. Solar Plexus Clown Gliders Solar Plexus Clown Gliders, or SPCG, is the collective name given to the broad range of paranormal phenomenon attributed to a corruptive entity which infects weak and vulnerable people through the solar plexus chakra. Originally used by 80s New Age practitioners, the phenomena was linked to a horror-themed email forwardable in the late 90s, which claimed that simply reading or hearing the words solar plexus clown glider made one susceptible to infection. Others claim that one became infected through viewing a set of spooky black and white images circulating online. Pigged Faced Woman Pig Faced Woman is referring to a woman who lived in Manchester Square in London. She said to be hideous and only got the facial deformity due to witchcraft, making it so that she was only beautiful to her husband and looked unappealing to everyone else. There were tons of reports like these all around England at the time. Black Flash The Black Flash, also known as the Province Town Phantom and the Devil of the Dunes, was a bizarre entity encountered many times, mostly by children in Province, Massachusetts. Throughout 1939, he lurked around Province, jumping at people, laughing maniacally, and eluding pursuit with extreme agility and speed. Witnesses would report seeing the Black Flash in one location, and in a minute later, other reports would come in of sightings across town. Argentinian Gnome The Argentinian Gnome was an entity later revealed to have been a hoax, allegedly caught on film in a small town in Argentina in 2008. This creature was described as having terrorized a small town, but he was later revealed to be a hoax, since no one else in the village ever reported seeing anything of that kind. 
cloud giant. Cloud giants are giant clouds that are unique but blend in with other clouds. They are mostly seen during thunderstorms and other severe weather events. Moving at high velocity, they can make entire homes and people disappear. Mad Gasser at Mattoon the Mad Gasser of Mattoon, described as a man wearing black, was the name given to a person or people believed to be responsible for a series of apparent gas attacks that occurred in Mattoon, Illinois. During the mid-1940s, more than two dozen separate cases of gassings were reported to police over the span of two weeks. In addition to many more reported sightings of the suspected assailant, the Gassers supposed victims reported smelling strange odors in their homes, which were soon followed by symptoms such as paralysis of the legs coughing, nausea, and vomiting. Piranha Creature The piranha creature was a name given to a strange animal carcass that was discovered by firefighters on October 21st near the shore of the Piranha River. The creature appears to be slightly over a foot long from head to toe. It is frog-like in form, but also monkey-like, with five fingers on each hand. The creature has no discernible neck and has pale skin. Gnome of Gerona the gnome is an unidentified creature that lives in Hanora, Spain. Many experts believe that the creature was a fetus of a local endangered species. In 1989, the local news in Spain reported that the hunter captured the creature. He reported that he was traveling along a forest near Enola. The hunter said that he heard a very strange, high-pitched groan. When the hunter looked over to where the noise was located, he saw the small entity. It began to run away from him. The hunter managed to capture the creature by holding it under a blanket. The creature refused to eat the food the hunter gave it. It soon died after its capture. Highway Beast The Highway Beast was a name given to a strange carcass found on the side of a highway in Alexandria, Minnesota on August 1st, 2011. The carcass is white with a small lower body and a thick upper body with an almost non-existent neck. The muscle is dog-like in structure, and the creature's front paws possess five clawed toes each. Kovashi Creature The Kovashi creature was a strange carcass found on the banks of the river Kovashi in the town of Sosanovi Bor in western Russia. I'm sorry if I butchered that. The woman named Tamara told reporters that she found the creature on the Kovashi River, which flows into the Gulf of Finland. Diogen. The Diogen, also known as the Diogen or the Eyes, is an evil spirit said to haunt the Sonayan forest in Belgium, often seen in fog form and followed by smaller shadow figures. The story, which is based on a series of true events, has become more of a campfire tale or urban legend, with virtually no sightings in recent years. Brazilian Werewolf The Brazilian werewolf is a humanoid cryptid reportedly caught by a security camera in Ceilandia, a city in East Central Brazil. Sea Monk The sea monk, or sometimes monkfish, is a type of merperson and was the name given to a sea animal found on the eastern coast of the Danish island of Zealand, almost certainly in 1546. It was described as a fish that looks suspiciously like a monk. It was mentioned and pictured in the fourth volume of Conrad Jensner's famous historian Anumilium. It supposedly died after three days of capture. Crawfordsville Monster The Crawfordsville Monster is an atmospheric beast that was sighted over Crawfordsville, Indiana in 1891. The cryptid, as told by witnesses, suggests an otherworldly creature. Accounts generally agree that it was a larger rectangular creature, possibly eel-like in appearance, with several undiluting fins down the sides of its body. Shug Monkey The Shug Monkey is a ghost-like, hairy humanoid sighted in the Rendlesham Forest in Britain. It appeared as an intermediate figure between canine and monkey. It is linked with British werewolf legends because of its canine features. It leaves footprints that look like dog's tracks, except that they are gigantic and have flattened claws. Flying Rays On December 3, 2004 in Manson County, witnesses reported seeing a flying manta ray on a clear night. After a man and a woman departed Point Pleasant, the woman noticed a sudden movement in the sky over the Ohio River. It was a grayish, smooth wing shape. The shape swooped in a figure eight in front of the windshield and was gone in an instant. Another sighting was reported near Randolph County. A woman and her daughter saw a manta ray shaped creature that glided near their car as they were driving. Giant Penguin The giant penguin is a creature allegedly seen in Florida during the 1940s and is at least partly documented to have been a hoax 
Later, a man came out claiming to be the person who left the fake footprints on the beach with the large iron foot replica. Sewer Humanoid The sewer humanoid was a strange humanoid cryptid that was caught on film in the sewer systems of the northwest side of England. The video was recorded in April of 2011. Moha Moha the Moha Moha is a turtle-like sea creature supposedly inhabiting the area of the Great Barrier Reef near Queensland, Australia. It is described as a long-necked creature with a large dome-shaped back and a huge fishtail. It was supposedly around 8 feet in width and 5 feet in height. Some claim that it was one of the last plesiosaurs from the Jurassic period, or at least a descendant from the animal. Giant Shrimp in the Laundry Room this was a bizarre cryptid sighted in 1948 by a Bermonton, Washington native named Virginia Staples. The personal account was originally published in issue 6 of Strange Magazine. The entity was seen standing inside a large hole in the wall of the basement laundry room of Virginia's rundown apartment building. The witness described the creature as standing approximately 5 feet in height, exactly as tall as her. Flannel Shirt Sasquatch Flannel Shirt Sasquatch is a subspecies of Sasquatch who apparently wears a flannel shirt and jean shorts. It was spotted around Northern California in the 60s and 70s. The most well-known encounter is that of a young woman who claimed she was camping in the woods when she heard a sound. It was the sound of someone walking. She thought it was her little brother trying to jump out and scare her, so she hollered, All right, stinker, I know you're there. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we gotta bring back stinker. I don't know why that phrase ever went out of style. All right, stinker. Anyways, it turned out the sound was not her brother. Instead, it was a creature about seven and a half to eight feet tall. And the strangest and most frightening thing about it, he had on clothes. Yes, that's right. They were tattered and torn and barely covered him, but they were still there. And to add on top of the terror, he had on a Yankee with no brim. Whoa! Yankee with no brim! Now, I think it's entirely possible that this creature is just a lumberjack. Camera heads. Camera heads look like human beings, but have cameras implanted in their eyes. Other descriptions paint them as being biomechanical with their entire heads being a camera. Tales of these strange individuals go back to a creepy pasta. I know, I know, but listen. The weird thing about this is that the original creepypasta about them went mysteriously miss. People could not find it on the internet for years, and in 2020 a video about the creepypasta was released on 4chan. Later that same year, a Lost Media Wiki user discovered an archived link to the original Camera Heads creepypasta. Now the interesting thing about this is that the archive story contradicted most of the available information related to the story at the time. Carnivorous Pink Cloud. Between the years of 1955 and 1966, people in Tomica, Florida reported a strange pink fog. And if that's not weird enough, it was also claimed that the fog would disintegrate any living being that entered it. Many deer hunters came upon this strange man-eating cloud and some even disappeared with only their bones being found later. Now I've said this before and I know this seems completely made up but you have to remember this is Florida we're talking about so it's probably true. Sky Serpents. So in part 1 I briefly touched on Sky Serpents. They're exactly what they sound like. Unidentified flying serpent like creatures. Sometimes they have wings, sometimes they don't. Sightings of these things have been pretty common even today. <laughs> The most well documented sky serpents are the Crawfordsville monster which appeared in Indiana in 1891 and the Namibia flying snake which was last sighted in the 70s. Conrit. So here's a picture of a centipede. Looks pretty freaking creepy right? Well just imagine the centipede was 60 feet long and 3 feet wide. Oh and it lived in the ocean for good measure. That's how the Conrit was described by a man who claims to have found the carcass of a creature washed up on the beach. Man, you know, that's almost as long as my- Oh, the camera cut out, but I was gonna say that's almost as long as my local soccer field. Rock apes. During the Vietnam War, many US soldiers claimed to see large apes in the dense jungles. Now, Vietnam is not known to be home to any species of apes, but despite that, many soldiers reported seeing six foot tall ape-like creatures with red hair, kind of looking like orangutans. 
Despite the detailed reports, no evidence shows that these apes ever actually existed, and no bodies were found despite many accounts of the apes being killed. Now there's one thing you have to remember about the Vietnam War. All of the soldiers were high on heroin, so take this one with a grain of salt. Penine pterodactyl. Now before I get into this one, I just want to address who the fuck came up with the spelling for the word pterodactyl, huh? Well, th th there's a silent P. What other word in the English language has a silent P, bro? It makes no sense. We just take out the P. Pterodactyl with the T. Anyways, rant over. The Pennines is a region in Western England that's supposedly home to a pterodactyl. A string of sightings started in 1982 by a man named William Green, who saw what he described as a huge bird with a six foot long wingspan. He also said that the creature was gray and leathery, similar to a bat. Well, which is it, Bill? A bird or a bat? You can't keep your story straight. Anyways, a few days later, a woman reported seeing a monster bird with a 10 foot wingspan. And as more and more sightings began to come in, people described it more as dinosaur-like rather than bird-like. Cabagon is the large aquatic cryptid who's believed to inhabit the Antarctic seas, specifically off the coast of New Zealand. From what I could find, it was only seen one time by a Japanese fishing crew. The Cabagon is described as grayish in appearance with two large eyes at the top of its head. It's believed by skeptics to be a misidentified walrus or some shit, I don't know. All I know is that Japanese people see a lot of weird stuff at sea. Tingvoir is a bull-like animal with long twisting horns and spotted fur. The best evidence for the existence of this creature is a set of horns found by biologist Wolfgang Peter at a market. Peter thought that the horns were so strange that they must have belonged to a new species. But just like your dad, there's little evidence of its existence. Were tiger. I couldn't find anything specifically on a were tiger, but I did find some stuff about were cats. Now, Unlike werewolves who turn into massive man-wolf hybrids, werecats are typically thought to just be people who can shapeshift into cats. Belief in werecats was actually pretty common prior to the 20th century. In fact, the Malice Malefic Harm, a Catholic witch hunting manual published in 1486, it stated that witches have the ability to turn into cats. Oviedo Dick Monster. Okay, this one's actually exactly what you think it is. It's, I'm not even gonna make a joke about it. I'm just gonna straight up read the entry off the cryptid wiki. In the central Florida town of Oviedo, only 15 minutes away from Orlando, there have been numerous reports and sightings of an alleged cryptid. This creature is said to stand seven feet tall when fully erect. It has a long phallus-shaped body and two round legs, thus the name Dick Monster. Most sightings take place at night in the woods of the Stillwater neighborhood, where many teenagers go to smoke cannabis. As a matter of fact, all sightings have been from teenage stoners in Stillwater. You think that's funny? There's an even better one on here called the Czechoslovakian Dong Wangler. First reported in the early 1930s by a couple visiting the town of Schniederhof. In the country then known as Czechoslovakia, the Czechoslovakian Dong Wrangler is a creature locally well known for its ability to wrangle multiple dongs at will. Wunan toads. These were said to be gigantic albino frogs that lived in China. There were two major sightings of these schmucks, one in 1962 and another one in 1987. In the second sighting, the one in 1987, a group of scientists set up cameras in an attempt to record these enigmatic creatures, but unfortunately one of the toads ate their cameras. Yeah, real fucking convenient. Black Volga. An urban legend in Eastern Europe, the Black Volga refers to a Volkswagen Gas 21 that was used to abduct people in the 60s. The car itself was black with white rims and white curtains on the inside. The speculation on who could be driving this vehicle varies from person to person. According to different versions, it could have been a, the Jews, communists, nuns, priests, vampires, or even the Russian Mafia. The motive for these kidnappings was apparently to steal people's organs or blood. but. But like, is this even a cryptid? Why, why, why is this on here? It's just clearly just a vehicle with people driving it. Let's move on. Belimbal Heights Alien. This extraterrestrial was captured on camera by YouTuber The Polish Knob in Australia. You fucking see that? No way. Fuck off. It dis what the fuck? It disappeared. Now aside from that video, the Polish Knob also has some other bangers including Alien Abducts Me and Best Footage of an Alien Close and Clear. What do you want? 
Old Saybrook Blackheads. These supposed extraterrestrials were seen by a retired teacher named Mary M. Starr. Clear fake name aside, Mrs. Starr reported seeing two strange entities outside her home in Old Saybrook, Connecticut. They were about four feet tall and their appendages had no hands and also their heads were transparent cubes with bright red cores and their rubbery bodies flared out like skirts. The killer cactus. Okay, this one I actually have heard about. There's this thing in Arizona called a jumping cactus, and these particular cactus ca ca cacti, these particular cacti latch onto people when they get too close. Why do they do that? I don't know, what the fuck do I look like, a cactus professor? Anyways, these killer cactuses apparently jump on people much farther away and they can seriously injure them. Veggie Man, not to be confused with the Jolly Green Giant, is a possible alien who was spotted by a hunter in West Virginia. The hunter, whose name is Jennings Frederick, alleged that the creature had a human-like face with long ears, slanted yellow eyes, and stick-like extremities. Now, the weirdest part about this is that he claimed the creature drained his blood with its fingers and then ran away. The next day, Jennings woke up with gonorrhea. Shinger Squonk. Now, I don't know what that name means, but it sounds racist. A squonk is a Pennsylvania legend, and much like your mother, is a large grotesque mass with bad skin and warts. If it's ever captured, it's said to dissolve into a pool of tears. Now, the more reasonable descriptions of this thing is that it's more pig-like, so possibly another species of pig? I don't know. The Metapec creature was a strange alien-looking animal found by a Mexican farmer in a trap. UFO journalist Jamie Mausen bought the body of the creature off the farmer. Turns out this one was a big hoax, and it was created by a taxidermist to screw with people. Six legged rap centaur uh I, I think we should just end it here all right guys well i think that's about it uh sorry it took me so long to come out with part two but hey like they say all good things come in time so if you like this video if you enjoyed it please give it a like and possibly even subscribe to my channel it helps me out tremendously in the algorithm and i would appreciate it a lot also go ahead and follow my twitter i'm also on other social medias i'm on myspace i'm on tiktok i'm on twitch follow me everywhere you might see some funny stuff every now and then also again shout out to both of Vallis and Fox Akimbo for helping me out with this video. Uh, I'm going to link their channels at the end of this video, so if you're interested in watching their stuff, please go ahead and do that. Uh, other than that, I, th I think that's it, man. Thank you, guys. Later.